What's up guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be reviewing the new Quickshot feature on the DJI Spark. This is a topic I questioned making a video on since the release of the Spark, but I've gotten a lot of questions on it in the past couple of months, so I figured I would just make a video. So as of now, we have four different quick shots that we can choose from. The reason that I say as of now is because I'm sure down the line, just like DJI did with their intelligent flight modes, they'll add more quick shots. Now these four quick shots are Droney, Helix, Rocket, and Circle, all of which promise to take professional looking shots for you with the push of a button. Before we begin taking quick shots, there are three things that we must do in order for them to work. First of all, take off, otherwise it's going to give you an error. Second of all, insert an SD card, as of course these quick shots are taking the footage for you. It's going to actually click the record button for you, basically. Uh, so make sure you have an SD card inserted. And then third and finally, make sure you have a strong GPS signal, otherwise it won't work. Anyway, to access these quick shots, tap the controller icon on the left side of the screen to access the Intelligent Flight Modes menu. Once we select quick shots, we have to give the Spark a subject to track by dragging a box over said subject. Now we have our choice between these four quick shots that I mentioned, Rocket, Droney, Circle, and Helix. To start off this tutorial, let's go over Rocket, which simply commands the Spark to fly straight up in the air, revealing the surrounding area. Recording starts as soon as you tap go, so don't be worried about forgetting to actually capture your footage. Something I noticed about this quick shot and the rest of the quick shots is that it begins flying upwards at a slow speed and then steadily increases as it goes higher. This adds a cool touch to the shot. There are two more things I want to point out located on the screen. First of all is the red X button on the left side. This stops the quick shot, bringing the spark to a hover. Use this in case that you notice that the drone is flying towards an obstacle. Next is the percentage completed located on the right side underneath of the record and shutter button. This lets you know how much longer you have to wait until the quick shot is done. On a side note, you can customize how high you want the drone to fly by tapping on rocket again. The maximum height is 90 meters, which is roughly 300 feet. I really wish that the max was 400 feet, but oh well. Next up we have Helix, which flies a spiraling circle upwards. This is by far my favorite quick shot because of how dynamic it is, but the only problem is that you need a lot of space. Basically, you just need to be extra careful of obstacles when using this quick shot. To get things started, highlight your subject and press go, just like you did with the rocket quick shot. Resembling the rocket quick shot, you can cancel by tapping the red X on the left and view the percentage progress underneath of the record and shutter button on the right. The distance that the spark flies can be changed by tapping the helix icon a second time before activation. You can also choose between clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. The next quick shot is circle, which simply flies a circle around the selected subject. Begin by manually setting your height and distance from the subject using your remote or mobile device. Select your subject as usual and tap go to begin the quick shot. This reminds me of a quicker version of the point of interest intelligent flight mode, but one of my complaints is the abrupt stop that it comes to at the end. It's like you can only use part of the footage if you want it to look cinematic. Just like with Rocket, we have some customization options when clicking on the circle icon a second time. Unfortunately, all we can do is switch between clockwise and counterclockwise. I wish there was a way to choose how many circles you wanted the spark to do. Right now, it is only limited to one. The final quick shot that we have is Droney, which essentially flies the spark backwards and upwards simultaneously while keeping the camera locked on the subject of your choice. After you lock onto the subject and press go, the spark begins its course. Just like the rest of the quick shot, you can cancel by tapping the red X on the left and view the progress percentage underneath of the record and shutter button on the right. If you wish to change the distance, you can do so just like you would for Rocket and Helix by tapping on the Droney icon a second time. At the end of each quick shot, the drone will slowly return to you on the same path that it already flew. This is very convenient, especially when you're doing something like Helix and you put the distance all the way up to 150 meters and it's super far from you. Again, it is very convenient to have the spark just fly right back to you. So there we have it, those are all four quick shots quickly explained. A lot of these can easily be done manually, but for starters, these are perfect. If you haven't tried these out, I would definitely give them a try because it certainly can't hurt. Anyway, that does it for me today. Be sure to check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as I have been trying to be a lot more active on all of my social media platforms. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.